Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week, Pastor Eric talked about Jesus preaching the or sharing the story of the parable of the mustard seed. That the kingdom of God is found in such very small seeds, and then that seed is also compared to an element of faith. It didn't matter how large the faith was when it started, and it really didn't matter how large the faith was when it was completed, because God's promises were there. This is only one of a few different parables that Jesus speaks at this time on the seashore of the Sea of Galilee with his disciples and with the crowds that were there. So he also talks about some other teachings of the kingdom of God in Mark chapter 4. We can think of this as a simple afternoon that Jesus is spending time with a few of his friends and a few others who are gathered there with them to learn. And so he uses this time to talk about the parable of the sower, the one that puts all the seeds in the ground and scatters the seeds and the birds come and eat it, uh, or the thorns come and infest it, uh, or even the sun scorches them. That's the parable of the sower, or the parable of the lamp on a stand that no, nothing can cover, the parable of the growing seed, and then finally the mustard seed. I'll have to admit that when, when Pastor Eric was talking about the parable of the mustard seed and you described it like this bush that was on the ground, and not a, a tree, but this bush that kind of spreads and then drops its seeds and spreads and drops its seeds, well, that reminded me of something that y'all have in West Texas that we don't have in Cyprus. So what kind of drops its seeds as it goes along? Who loves tumbleweeds? No one. I've always thought of the parable of the mustard seed as this beautiful tree, and then you see the birds pictured in it. Maybe you even have uh, an art artistic depiction of it in your house. We can often see it at Christmas time, along with pear trees that birds sit in. But it's mustard seed where this, now the tree, now you've turned it into a, a ragged little bush. But it's good because that's where we want the kingdom of God to be, is everywhere, spreading. So after all of these discussions, maybe it was an hour, maybe it was four, then the disciples get into a boat and a couple other boats to go across the lake in evening time. And at the end of a long lecture, I know that I'm tired. I need my nap, but Jesus says, no, this is where we need to go next. And so then on that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let us go across to the other side and leaving the crowd, they took him, they took him with them in the boat just as he was. And the other boats were with him. So the disciples were not all in one small fishing vessel. They were in a, a few boats. In my line of work in the Navy, we call that a strike group, that they were about to go to the other side, all in tandem with each other. But then a great windstorm arose. The waves were breaking into the boat, so the boat was already filling. This is not a good day. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And they woke him and said, Teacher, teacher do not care that we are perishing. I don't think that's how they said it. Teacher, teacher, don't you care that we are perishing? We're about to die here on this boat. Look at what's happening. Oh, woe is me. And Jesus, when he gets up, and he says very calmly, Well, the disciples then are saying, what is happening here? We just listened to his teaching. Now we're going to the other side just as he directed, and we're about to die. Why did I leave my family, my friends, my home for this? Where are you? God, don't you care that we are perishing? Our Old Testament reading from the book of Job uh, takes us to a dialogue that Job has uh, with God. In Job chapter 26 to 31, Job is speaking over and over again the, the, the frustration, the fear, the anxiety that he has after having lost his children, after having lost all of his livestock and his land and his home. And now his body was affected by boils, that Job was affected by all these things. And so for six chapters, Job says, God, where are you? 
Don't you care that I am perishing? Now, Job still had a wife, and he still had a few friends. And so he would often share things with him. Talking to his wife was not the greatest thing for Job because she just said, well, renounce your your faith in God. He's not listening. Even Job's friends, one by one, would say, you know what, Job, I... I love the faith that you had at the time, but I don't think God is here anymore. He had one friend named Elihu that tried to speak again and again into Job's life saying, God is here, wait on him. And so for six chapters, Elihu speaks to Job saying, wait and trust in God. Our reading this morning from Job chapter 38 was God's response to Job. And in God's response, he says, where were you when I formed the land out of nothing? Where were you when I I made the waters come out from uh, the depths of the earth? Where were you when all this happened? I am much more aware of things in this life than you are. But yet you are concerned about only yourself. And Job answers, the Lord answers Job out of a storm, out of a whirlwind. And sometimes that's how it feels that God is answering us too. When things are most tumultuous and things are the roughest, we say, God, don't you care that we are perishing? But Jesus' response was not to be upset or frustrated, but to remind them who he was as the great I am, the son of God. Jesus awoke, rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. A peace that surpasses all understanding a calmness that the disciples couldn't have foreseen when they were frustrated and asking if they were about to die, one that wasn't a a quick answer because they were just fearful for everything. But Jesus in a still small voice says, peace, be still. And then he asked the disciples, why are you so afraid? Have you still no Again, tied to that parable that Jesus just shared on the seashore when he said that your faith is like that of a mustard seed that grows much larger. And then he reminds them very soon after, where is your faith? I'm here with you. I've never left you. Just as the heavenly father has not left his people at any point in time. The disciples were filled with great fear, and they said to one another, Who is this then, that even the wind and the sea obey him? I think they were afraid of the power that was sitting with them in that boat. That they underestimated Jesus, that he was just this guy who called them out of their life of fishing and and then started preaching and teaching and showing some miracles. And now they realize, boy, those miracles, it's not just water into wine and helping some people that were sick, but it's actually to control everything that we have ever known and seen in this world. The cool thing about this gospel account from the gospel of Mark is that this is shared in two other gospels. You can see it's also shared in Matthew chapter eight and Luke chapter eight. But in those two gospels, something very different happens that only occurs in Mark. In the Gospel of Mark, it's the only one where Jesus invokes these words, peace, be still. In the other two, it just says that Jesus rebuked the wind and the waves. We don't know what he said, but I I think those words, peace, be still, have great meaning for us as followers of God. Because it was in a, a still, small voice that God speaks to the prophets in the Old Testament not out of a fire, not out of a whirlwind, but in a still, small voice, just as Jesus speaks to the wind and the waves. We also see in a very clear way 
in Psalm chapter 46. That it is not in the, the loud, triumphant times, but it's in the still, small times that we are reminded that God is here. In Psalm chapter 46, psalmist writes, God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. This sounds a lot like the gospel of Mark when those wind and the waves came tumultuously on the disciples and they thought they were about to die. That God is our fortress that through his gifts of faith by the Holy Spirit, calling us into this, this protection of the church, that he is here. Though the earth gives way, God is here. Through the sickness and the pain that Job experienced, God was there. And he's here among us today. When you see suffering and pain and heartache, when we can't see the answer to the question of God, what are you up to? God is here. And then the psalmist writes this, these words from God. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Sometimes we just need to be reminded that God is here, that God is in your homes, that God is in your schools, that God is in your workplaces, that he is here even in the chaos. Be still and know that God is with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.